is the Emergency Medical Minute. I've got a quick medical minute on a uh, kind of interesting case presentation. So, um, 30 year old guy presents with kind of acute, severe mid back, upper kind of upper back uh, pain. Um, it's very much reproducible with movement, twisting, bending, coughing. Um, he says it's been constant for like a week. Uh, he's very concerned about it. Um, are there dangerous causes of kind of musculoskeletal low back pain in otherwise healthy people? The answer is yes. What kinds of things might be of d- d- dangerous that we'd want to consider in a young man like this? Anybody have any ideas? Triple A, certainly always a possibility. Uncommon under the age of 50, but it can occur. Um, good good one, important, life threat. What else? Co- yeah, so cauda equina syndrome is a syndrome of like urinary retention, also often leading to urinary incontinence, saddle anesthesia and things, usually from a lesion in the low back, so not commonly associated with upper back pain, but like spinal cord compression of, for any reason would definitely be a concern. Why would people, why would a young healthy person get that? What would be the lesion that might do it? IV drug use, somebody said. That's a great, exactly right. Yeah. So IV drug use. So anytime we see a young person with back pain, we should, in our minds, make sure we're confident they're they're not using IV drugs because that's a huge marker for spinal infection. Now, this patient um, was not initially queried about IV drug use, but returned the next day with worsening pain. He got transiently better after getting some trigger points, lidocaine patches, Toradol, and things came back still very symptomatic, um, was queried and admitted to using IV heroin on a, on a daily basis. Yeah, I, and the next step would be what? How would we then move on? So there's two ways to approach it. So in patients who present with like a neurological deficit, so a numb leg, a weak arm, you know, incontinence, absolutely an MRI would be the way to go. In people who are not and say deny fevers, deny other infectious symptoms, you can screen these patients with blood work. And so there's a nice study out of UC San Diego by an author called Davis where they did a prospective analysis of using a structured approach. So rather than going straight to MRI for folks who had a risk factor for this spinal cord infection, was to screen them with a CRP and an ESR. And if they have an ESR less than one or a C, sorry, an ESR less than 20 or a CRP less than one, that is about 90% sensitive to exclude the diagnosis. So in somebody who you don't have a high suspicion, it's a fairly good test. But an ESR over 20 or a CRP less than one gets an MRI. And that's in fact how this case proceeded and this patient was found to have an epidural abscess. He was extremely fortunate to have this identified before developing any neurological deficits. The majority of these cases present with neurological deficits. And if you present with a neurological deficit, about 90% of those deficits are permanent. So when we see someone come in and they're paralyzed or in continent, they don't usually get better, despite making the diagnosis and appropriate treatment. So that's my medical minute on spinal epidural abscess and back pain in young people. Question. Treatment. So the spinal epidural abscess is treated with IV antibiotics and surgical debridement. So there, there are, it is actually a spectrum of disease with discitis, so infection within the disc, osteomyelitis, so infection within the bone, and then an actual collection of pus or abscess. Some patients will present pre-abscess, but certainly if there's an abscess, they have to be debrided. You have to cut it out. Yeah, good question. All right, thank you. Let's have a good shift. Emergency Medical Minute is and always will be about free medical education. Medicine's most prolific podcast is successful because of our supporters, donors, and of course, our listeners. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you support spreading free medical education, please donate at our website, emergencymedicalminute.com. As always, keep listening.